Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a special edition of X's and O's here on this Tuesday afternoon. It is the reveal of the 2021-2022 Mariners schedule. Speak for Riley and myself when I say it's been a long time coming to get some games back on the schedule, but we're here to break it all down for you this afternoon. Uh, we may have some viewers that don't normally check out X's and O's on a normal time slot of 7 o'clock. So this is an interactive show. If you're new, you can drop comments or questions for Riley or myself in the Facebook chat. We'll bring those up on screen. There are a few things we want to get out of the way before we jump in. Some, some uh, questions we're anticipating may happen throughout. Uh, the first one being we do not have answers yet on COVID protocols or capacity. Uh, that situation remains fluid as we move throughout the next six months. Certainly, we hope there will be no restrictions by the time we get to October, but uh, nothing has been uh, decided yet on that. So we know that that's a big question that a lot of people are wondering about, uh, and we just don't have the answers to that quite yet. But we will obviously keep everyone posted as we get answers to those questions and we move closer and closer to October. Uh, question number two that might come up, single game ticket information. Uh, single game tickets will go on sale toward the end of September. So for all ticketing uh, packages, we do have full full season packages, half season, 12 game mini plans, and 10 ticket flex packs. And you can always call 833 uh, go Main or visit marinersofmain.com for ticket information. But again, single game tickets will come at you toward the end of September. And finally, the graphics that we're going to pull up for the schedule in a moment do not have start times on them. But start times for all Mariners home games remain the same as they've been for the last uh, for last season, the 2019-20 season. 7:15 starts on Friday, 6 p.m. on Saturday, 3 p.m. on Sunday, 7 o'clock on weekdays. And there are three exceptions to that, which we will mention when we get to them in the schedule. But before we dive in, this is X's and O's. So as always, we have our tail of the tape, and it's breaking down the season comparison for the first two seasons of Mariners hockey. Uh, 2018 19, obviously 10 additional games played due to the uh, COVID shutdown in 2019 20, but an improvement in point percentage. Riley, as we were um, uh, unfortunate victims of missing out on the playoffs due to the COVID shutdown, but it certainly looked like playoffs were going to be a thing in season two. But as you think back to these first two years of Mariners hockey, how did you see your, your team improve from year one to year two? And, um, and hopefully things you can bring into year three, even with a gap between seasons. Yeah, um, you know, I, I felt for our first year in in the league and kind of starting from scratch the way that we did, um, you know, a little different than what the NHL gets to do with the expansion draft. Um, but, you know, I, I, I felt we did a really good job on recruiting some uh, good young players. I thought we made some really good trades in the first year uh, that really helped our, our team and helped the core. Um, but, you know, I think uh, so it's not too often, even when you look at the playoffs right now in the NHL or, or any league, you always look at the win-loss or the, the goal differential um, going into it. Um, and those teams that are a plus team are usually a playoff team, and the teams that are minus are out of the playoffs. So um, that was one thing, even though we had 37 wins uh, and we we're above 500 team in that first year, we did give up a lot of goals. Um, and that was something that we wanted to really put on the forefront going into the second year. And, you know, we had 10 games remaining and we still have, you know, we'd have to give up almost six goals a game to touch what, where we're at in the first year. So, you know, I think that was a good stride that we took um, from our, uh, you know, from our, our own zone moving out. Um, you know, and I think we're still on pace to score the same amount of goals as well, but, when you look at the wins again, I, you know, the way that we are kind of going on pace in that second year was about a seven and three record at every 10 games. So, you know, I was an anticipating around 39, 40 wins going in and, and being a playoff team. So, um, you know, I, and I think that's what makes it really exciting for the players that are coming back is that they, they see the strides that we're, we're making as, as a team in, in this league. And, I think also from an in individual standpoint, you can see how guys have really progressed in uh, throughout their first two years. You know, uh, um, guys like uh, Greg Chase and Terrence Wall and Dylan Fox, Ryan Culkin, they all had tremendous second years on uh, coming out. Now, you know, just as we get set to jump into the 21-22 schedule, 
How exciting is it for you to have some games on the schedule to look forward to? Um, you know, we had we had announced a home opener for 2021, and we had a schedule that that was ready to be released, but obviously none of that came to fruition due to the whole division opting out. So uh, I know I know I speak for you when I say it's been a long, uh, long 13, 14 months now. But um, you know, how does it make you feel to be able to look and and anticipate and look forward to some games? Yeah. Um... You know, they kind of uh, faked us out last year. We were getting pretty fired up to get that release going. So uh, this one's been a long time coming for sure. Um, you know, it's just it's just kind of getting back in the groove again of, you know, uh, booking hotel rooms and and flights and road meals and, you know, all that kind of stuff that uh, you haven't done in over a year. You got to you got to get the groove back a little bit and uh, start get on the phone, start sending some emails. So. It actually feels good to to get back doing that that type of stuff. Um, I don't know if a lot of people that are tuning in right now uh, are aware of the amount of hats that uh, the front office and the hockey ops staff uh, does use or wear during um, a, a, a season. So um, it's not just X's and O's and uh, coaching games. It's doing a bunch of the other little stuff uh, that gets to come into play here once the schedule gets released. All right. Well, I know that everyone is uh, here for a reason and they want to see the schedule. So we're going to jump into it. But quickly, for anyone that might have just come on a little bit late, again, this is an interactive show. We'd love to hear from you. Please drop your comments or your questions. Um, we'll do our best to answer them. Again, there are some things we don't have answers on just yet, but um, we always love to hear from you. And we'll have trivia coming up later on as well, as always, for a chance to win some great prizes. So without further ado, October 2021. Now we know about the first game. We announced it in early March. The home opener presented by Skowhegan Savings will be October 22nd. That's a Friday night, so it'll be a 7:15 start against the Worcester Railers, and that will be followed by the second half of a home and home at the Worcester Railers on October 23rd. And Riley, I think it's safe to say Worcester has been the biggest rival. You know, geographically, it obviously uh, matches up and. You have the history of the the old Pirates Sharks rivalry that you played on the other side, um, but we haven't had a chance to open the season against them. So, what a great way to return to to hockey in in Maine here by having this home and home rivalry uh, right off the bat. Yeah, um, you know, I think for the last uh, two years we've seen Adirondack at home to start. So, um, first of all, it's a nice little change. Um, and then once, once again, I think all of our games against Worcester are always really good games. They're always tight. Uh, a lot of them go to overtime. Um, you know, and I, I really do feel it's, uh, we, we match up pretty well. Um, you know, and then why, why not start off with back to back, um, and, you know, get, get the guys going right, right off the bat and with a couple back to back games. So, um, you know, I, I, I think it's going to be great for the, for the fans to come in. I, you know, I, I would anticipate fans from Worcester even coming up um, to watch that first game too. So uh, that, that always makes it a, a lot better. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of our fans heading down to Worcester for that second game as there always are great support uh, when the Mariners visit Worcester. Uh, the new team in the North Division this year, Trois Rivière, uh, yet to name, uh, yet to announce a team name. So we're just calling them Trois Rivière right now. They enter the league this season along with Coralville. But we're going to be seeing a lot of Trois Rivières uh, as they are in the division, replacing Brampton, who announced that they were ceasing uh, operations. Uh, three of the first four games at home there, as you see, we have a Halloween game as well. Riley, what are you going to dress up as uh, on October 31st? <laughs> well, uh, the last couple of years, I've had a, a Captain America um, one one piece outfit that uh, my wife has wanted me to go into with. Uh, with our son to, to kind of match up, but uh, with the quarantine weight, I got to shed about 20 pounds to fit into it. So uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, I think when Redding comes in into town there on Halloween, you might have to be asking K Mac what he's going to be dressing up as <laughs> well. So, um, but then I, I, I also think it's going to be really cool for the main fans um, of seeing different teams coming into our building. Um, you know, they, they've seen a lot of Worcester. They've seen, a lot of Ad Adirondack and Reading, and and now to to see Trois Rivier come in and and teams like that, I think it's going to be cool for them to come out, see a different jersey out out there, and a, a different opponent. So uh, I'm I'm looking forward to that game as well. Uh, Andrew Hart is asking us what time uh, the Sunday Halloween game. It's going to be at three o'clock, so that'll be the standard Sunday 
start time uh, for Halloween, and I'm sure we'll have some fun Halloween-related uh, activities throughout the game. Our promotional schedule will certainly be in the works here as we move through uh, the offseason. So that is the October 2021 schedule. Obviously, the entire schedule will be available up on our website uh, following the end of our show here. So let's move ahead to November 2021 and a pretty busy month uh, right off the bat here, including some out-of-division games. The first ever meeting with the Florida Everblades is they will visit for one game the Cross Insurance Arena on November 5th. And then a four-game trip that I know I'm looking forward to down to Florida at Jacksonville at Orlando for four games, uh, returning home for two games around the Thanksgiving holiday, the American Thanksgiving holiday, uh, and then finishing up at Adirondack. So pretty busy there. Uh, Riles, obviously we haven't had the chance to travel out of division a whole lot so far. A couple of trips to Norfolk and a trip out to Utah, but that's been it. Uh, so now we get to see... Uh, some of the Florida teams and and the Everblades as well coming to Maine for an inaugural matchup. Yeah, once once again, a new team coming up here to Maine. Um, I think I think it's going to be great. Um, and then in in return, they allow us to go down to Florida as well, um, which I, I I always think is good. Um, kind of just uh, traveling, seeing different teams, uh, going different places. Um, and I think, I think the players really enjoy it too. Um, you know, when, when you're always facing, you know, just like the fans, when you're always facing the same teams over and over night after night, um, it's, it's always good to throw a little mix in there. Road trips are always so key for, um, the, the players, uh, being able to, you know, get on the road, go out to dinners, uh, grab meals together and, and just being able to hang out in the, in the hotel and, and stuff like that. That's where you really get the team bonding coming into play compared to being at home all the time. So at the start of the year there, we are at home quite a bit. So it'll be a nice little uh, trip down there for sure. And that photo there in the bottom left is actually a picture of Trois Rivières, which we are not, uh, we have not visiting in November, but they do come in for two games in November and we will be visiting there many times. And uh, Riley, have you ever been to Trois Rivières? I have not. I have not. I just call it three rivers all the time. And uh, Danny's been correcting me a lot. So um, definitely got to brush up on my uh, French skills. <laughs> once yeah. Definitely yeah. go in there um, for, for myself in the in the years that I've uh, played in the league and, and coached. Um, I have been to Orlando once, Florida once, um, and I have never been to Jacksonville. So, um, you know, even, even for me, uh, it's going to be cool to see a new rink. I agree with that for sure. And uh, you just saw Bill O'Malley there, the uh, marketing guy over at the Cross Insurance Arena suggesting wild blueberries for the new name. Hey, if you have any suggestions, send them in. and We'll send them along to our friends at Three Rivers uh, as they look to, to get a team name uh, for the new season. So let's move on to the month of December 2021, another very busy month. And the first half of the month looks a lot like the 2019-20 schedule, all Worcester and all Adirondack. <laughs> we saw them uh, for half of the schedule in 2019-20, uh, not, not quite as frequently this year, but obviously we will still see a lot of those teams. Then there's that first trip to Trois-Rivières uh, right before the Christmas break, and then back at Worcester on the other side of the Christmas break before two games right before the new year. And, and there are a couple games in here with – um, start times that are uh, different than the normal. So December 29th is going to be a three o'clock game. It's a midweek game, but during the uh, holiday break, that's going to be at three o'clock. Uh, New Year's Eve is going to be at five o'clock. So five o'clock on New Year's Eve, the rest of the uh, home games in the month are the same. Again, for anyone tuning in late, normal start times, 7.15 Friday, six o'clock Saturday, three o'clock Sunday, seven o'clock weekday. And we only have uh, Wednesday weekday home games this year, so it's easy, a little bit easier uh, on the schedule. But again, that December 29th will be 3 o'clock. December 31st will be 5 o'clock. So, Riley, as you look here, uh, we make a couple of trips to Worcester in the month, three different trips, uh, a place that you spend a lot of time as a player. Uh, what are some of your favorite spots in Worcester whenever we go back? Oh, uh, well, Usually we go in and it's just a, a, a day trip um, going in, going out. Um, but on, on times where uh, being able to, to stay, they got a, a Chop 11 uh, steakhouse. 
and uh, also the sole proprietor it's called uh not far from the arena both places uh excellent food uh great service um so those are two spots i went to a lot when i played there and um Last year, we spent a lot of nights in Adirondack, and uh, my favorite spot to eat is Mikado. It's a new sushi hibachi uh, restaurant not far from the arena as well. Uh, I know Jake Rogers is a frequent uh, visitor to the Burger King Lounge uh, <laughs> the road from uh, the Cool Insurance Arena. So um, definitely uh, two two good spots that uh, we, we travel to. Um, always good games, great fans in, in both spots too. And um, don't worry, Sam. The five o'clock game will get you off to your New Year's party right after too with a big <laughs> so looking forward to that too. And of course, uh, we can't forget the bullpen in Glens Falls. <laughs> that is um, true. <laughs> and they have uh, good food there as well. I know you guys uh you go you like to uh fill up there, but uh the food uh, also very good. And for someone that likes more American cuisine, uh, you know, I appreciate that as well. So uh, lots of trips to Worcester and uh Adirondack. Before we move forward here into 2022, which is hard to believe, uh, let's drop our trivia question. Give the fans some time to stew on that. Which non-North Division opponent do the Mariners have the most wins against? So non-North Division teams. Riley, you got a prize to offer up. True hockey hat. Look at that thing of beauty. I know Riley was showing off some of his skates from True Hockey on, on Twitter earlier this week. So check that out if you haven't. Very good uh, video producer of that video. Yeah, uh, he got that right. Thanks, Kiels. Appreciate <laughs> that. Hey, Kiels, quick question for you. Uh, with yeah. the schedule here in uh, December, we got a lot of games on the road, uh, almost uh, a little over half there. But what's a day on the road like for you uh, being the media relations uh, broadcast guy? Well, it's uh, in, in many ways, it's easier than being at home because you have a few more responsibilities during home games. As far as getting the press box ready, testing out the uh, all the the technology, obviously um, printing out game notes for not only the media but the fans that come in, the insert that you receive with your um, program that is something I create. So, uh, in many ways, it's it's a little bit less stressful to be on the road. Um, but usually, what I like to do is go with the team to morning skate and set up my equipment. At that point, I usually check in with uh, Riles and the coaches in the morning about to any potential lineup um, changes for that night, or just to get the lineup and get that set to go and incorporate that into my game notes. Um, usually uh, have a, have a meal either with the team or um, somewhere in town. And then I like to get to the rink early. I always have um, since I was broadcasting in college, uh, you know, as early as they'll let me in, I'll get there, you know, two, three hours before, just cause you can never, uh, never do enough preparation, not only in terms of you know, what you're going to say on the air that night, but also just making sure everything works because from building to building, sometimes there's technological problems that's sometimes out of your control. Uh, other times it's in your control. Um, but, uh, and then, you know, certain buildings have different procedures in their press boxes of how you plug in to, to uh, what will be flow sports this year. Um, you know, what the internet connection's like, all those different things. Do you need a, an adapter for your audio equipment? Um, so, but I, I certainly enjoy, you know, going to some cities I've never seen before. And that's why I'm looking forward to uh, the Florida trip this year. But, um, you know, I definitely miss it. And as much as I love the home games here at the Cross Insurance Arena, also fun going on the road and having a little, little fewer things to worry about. Uh, and I can just kind of focus on the broadcast. Sometimes I feel like my broadcasts are better on the road because I'm not, I don't have things in the back of my mind about all the other stuff happening uh, at home. So um, if anyone wants to read more about that, I think I did a blog post about two years ago now on the, the See For Yourself blog about a day in the life of uh, an ECHL broadcaster. And uh, that was actually for a home game, but uh, check that out if you get the chance. So um, I'm going to ask about your routine, Riley, but let's save it. Uh, we'll move forward here, uh, into 2022, which is hard to believe because 2021, 2020 and into 2021 kind of felt like a, a year that didn't exist for obvious reasons. But uh, as we move into the first month of 2022, we have uh, two threekends in here of four total threekends on the year. And this is actually the busiest home month of the season. As you see there, um, Orlando and uh, 
Orlando comes in with for three, and then the other three can just three different teams. Worcester, Reading, and Trois Rivieres, a total of nine home games in the month. There's also a trip to Newfoundland in there. Uh, so we will be very busy. Um, but Riley, uh, before we talk about all the home games, let's talk about that Newfoundland trip. Um, obviously, that is a unique place to visit. I don't care if you're a hockey fan or anyone else. Um, it almost feels like its own country out there uh, to the far east of, of most of Canada and um, a place where I know the players really enjoyed themselves last year. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's an hour and a half time time change, so it's uh, kind of throws you off just that little bit. Um, but at the, at the same time, it's all about setting yourself up for that trip. And that starts January 1 against Adirondack and that four-game stretch there of building confidence going into that trip. You know, it's a long – it's a long trip out there. You have a connecting flight. Um, you know, sometimes your bag just doesn't make it and there's hiccups along the way that we have to account for. Um, so it's just being re really prepared um, away from the rink on that kind of stuff and and understanding that, you know, those bounces do come and you just kind of kind of have to roll with them. And uh, Jake Rogers always does a really good job at ha handling those uh, scenarios pretty, pretty well. So, um, but uh, going out there, I love it. My favorite spot to eat in Newfoundland has to be the keg. Um, All-time favorite back home in Saskatoon. Um, so that's where uh, I, I like to venture right off the bat as I get down to the keg as soon as we land um, and have a, have a nice steak. So, um, And then after that, they have a lot of other good uh, local spots that I don't get to uh, go to quite often being in Canada. So uh, Boston Pizza is another good one, pretty close to the rink. Uh, again, Keels for you. It has more of an assortment of food that I think you enjoy more on the road. I always see you kind of wandering over there. Um, and then for our the some of the other staff, they uh, really love Green Sleeves, which is another uh, local place on George Street. Um, nice little lunches there. So um, I know Jake Rogers uh, spent a lot of time there eating uh, eat, eating his pregame meal over there and stuff like that, getting ready for the games uh, the last time we were there. Yeah, you know, um, mo mo Americans may think that uh, Boston Pizza is just like a pizza joint, but it's not. It's almost more like an Applebee's. It uh, has kind of a full full menu. Uh, but the keg is fantastic as well. I mean, those those steaks are, are prime, uh, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, great, great steaks uh, and, and great food uh, throughout Newfoundland. So we'll be going back there. And the Mariners had the distinction of becoming the first team to win three games in a row in Newfoundland against the Growlers last year in that great trip in February, which really, I think, boosted the team towards the playoff push that, of course, got cut short, uh, unfortunately, by COVID. But um, nice to have some confidence going in there, right, Riles? Because uh, before that, it had been a house of horrors, not for just you guys, but for everybody. Uh, but the team had you know, gone winless in the 18-19 season there and then just a, a really successful trip in last February or two Februarys ago. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, it was in the back of our minds, definitely. And then we go in there that first game and then we lose, you know, and then everyone starts thinking, oh, is this going to be another one? So um, I, I was proud of the guys. You know, I remember that trip uh, like it was yesterday, just how, how well we responded. Um and it, you know, when you talk about confidence, it's it's such a funny thing. Once you get that feeling that you know you can beat a team, you always find a way to win. And and it's those games where, uh, you know, you kind of have it in the back of your mind, and the other team has a little bit of confidence on you. And no matter what, if you're up, you know, three nothing, four one, you know, you you find a way to give them a goal, give them another goal. Then all of a sudden, you're on on your heels. So. Um, I think that's what we did to Newfoundland. Uh, we definitely uh, were, were able to build a lot, have a ton of confidence in the final three games and come out on top. And uh, then we were going in and then we went in shorthanded after that with a trade being made and a couple of guys getting hurt on that trip. And then we beat Adirondack again. So we went on a nice little run uh, during that stretch there for sure. So, um, you know, I'm just hoping at the start of the year, we get off on the right foot uh, compared to the last couple of years. Um, before we go any further though, Keels, I like Diana's question here. Will we have fireworks on New Year's? Um, I'm not too sure what the protocol is that, you know, within within the arena. I think they have done it in the past um, with the Pirates. So I'm, I'm not sure kind of what's going on there. But who doesn't like a good fireworks show? 
Yeah, you know, I, I a ton of people talked about this um, when we were talking about having New Year's Eve games, and it was a big a big favorite with the Pirates. And I, I had never personally, I've never even seen indoor fireworks. So I was trying to think to myself, how what is that going to look like? But I, I assume that we will be looking into that uh, because I'm sure everybody will want to bring back that tradition. So stay tuned, Diana, uh, and thank you for the question. And two other quick notes about this January schedule, as you see right there. January 30th game will start at 5 o'clock. Uh, that is the final schedule, uh, home schedule time, um, uh, special time. As of now, of course, everything is subject to change. But uh, And then Orlando coming in. We haven't seen Orlando. Well, we will go to Orlando, but we haven't seen them at the Crossroads Arena since the November of 2018. So they'll be in for three. In fact, that picture in the bottom right there is from November of 2018. So throwing it all the way back. Um <laughs> And we'll see the Orlando Solar Bears. So that's the busiest home month of the 2021-22 season. And we'll scroll ahead here to February, where it is spent largely on the road. There are um, some home games there toward the middle of the month, February 18th, 19th, and 20th. Another three can there with the two Canadian opponents. And then finishing the month home against Adirondack. But uh, three games. Uh, we'll be in Canada for a while there, Riles, in your homeland. Uh, yeah. At the Vier, February 2nd through 5th at Newfoundland. February 9th through 12th. And I guess, yeah, I guess we'll have to have Danny take us on a tour of uh, Far Riviera. He's a lot closer. He's in his hometown uh, than either of us have never been there. So that'll, that'll be fun to, uh, to be on the road for a while there and then back home. And uh, this is when you get into the dog days, um, as we've seen, you know, that, that 17 round shootout was against uh, the Growlers in February or 18 rounds, I should say. Um, actually, it was in March, but you know, you get towards the end of the season there, and um, that's going to be a tough road trip. You know, it reminds me of the road trip to Utah around uh, late February 2019, where it was make or break, and the team was really um, their playoff life was ended on success on that trip. They ended up winning two of three, taking five of six points, and uh, made a really nice run. So, you know, this is a road trip looking ahead that could be really important for this team. Yeah. Um, you know, I think first, first of all, um, like I said, getting on the roads, always nice uh, for, for the guys and, and hanging out and doing that type of thing. But I think when it gets into this type of trip um, as a staff, that's a trip I look at um, that we have to get uh, creative um, maybe with some uh, fun activities, bowling, uh, stuff like that, just to keep the guys loose and, and um, you know, hang, hanging out. Cause I think sometimes the team, if, if you have a tight knit team, they start to turn into like brothers. And if they're around them too much on a bus plane, hotel rooms, they start to kind of poke at each other a, away from the rink and stuff like that. So some to kind of keep them loose, uh, you know, bowling, taking them to an, an arcade kind of what, you know, meet with the, the team leaders that we have uh, coming into this year and kind of see on, on things that uh, we, we can do. Um, but at, at the same time, um, you know, it, it is going to be a big trip. That's where usually the playoffs come in into the picture right here. Um, where, you know, I think in the North division, as you've seen the last couple of years, it's always a dog fight to the final weekend. Uh, that first year we were in it right to the second last game of the year, um, that, that we fell out. Um, and then even, even last year, it was still, you know, in a, in a pretty tight, tight race with 10 games left. So. I think that's where uh, these road trips and and to be a good team and a good playoff team, you have to be able to win on the road. Um, so, you know, I think that's where it's going to come in and really test the character of uh, of the group of guys we're going to have. Well, and to mention as well, uh, you're seeing it on every every graphic here that the 21-22 season is presented by Hannaford to go. They're going to be the presenting sponsor of the 21-22 season. And they're also going to be having the Hannaford Kids Corner at each home game where Hannaford will be donating 50 tickets to local youth and charitable organizations. So uh, we thank Hannaford for jumping on board and we're looking forward to the partnership with them uh, throughout the 21, 22 season. So that's it for February. Let's move ahead into the month of March where we resume a, a pretty busy month uh, at home, especially towards the end there. Uh, the South Carolina Stingrays, even though they're, uh, out of division foe, they'll be making their third consecutive trip, not including this season, obviously. They're actually playing uh, this season, but uh, we've seen them visit the Cross Insurance Arena each of the first two Mariners seasons, and they'll be back March 19th and 20th. 
Um, we've already had some memorable games with them. In fact, uh, Wild Blueberry Night was against the South Carolina Stingrays in 2019, as was the night when the Stanley Cup was in the building. And then last season, when they visited in March, they were the best team in the ECHL, and it was a crazy game. Uh, I think the Mariners ended up losing 6-4, but it was a back-and-forth, um, highly offensive uh, game. And uh, it's always exciting to have a team like that in the building. They always have some very good players um, that come up and down throughout their system, Riley. And um, I think that game last season was a good measuring stick for the Mariners at how good they could be. Again, South Carolina was the best team in the league at the time. And unfortunately, again, COVID cuts everything short. Always exciting that it's coming. Yeah, um, you know, it's always weird that South Carolina comes up here. Uh, their uh, GM, Rob Kincannion, is a Boston guy. So I'm pretty sure he he uh, asked the league for a couple of favors to get back up into his neck of woods here uh, to come play up here. So, um, but I, I, you know, I, I, feel the same way they had they have a really good uh back last year they had a good uh, goalie tandem uh they had some high uh high scoring uh forwards uh but i i remember that game and it was uh some power play goals some back and forth we were down a bunch we scored a bunch uh we actually got the lead at one point um and then gave it back up so it was definitely a very in- entertaining game um and then who doesn't remember the wild blueberry game against these guys too um you know, something pretty historic that, you know, even um, uh, Bill O'Malley really thinks that Toile Riviere should be the Wild Blueberry. So um, it's definitely a name that I think should be in the league. So we'll kind of see what happens there. But, um, you know, it's, it, it's always cool, again, once, uh, you know, seeing those different teams instead of the Worcester and, and, and Adirondack and those types of guys to see South Carolina come in. Um, for, for myself, another rank I've never been to is South Carolina. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for the, the league to, uh, put us on that road trip, uh, the following year. We'll see. As you see right there, the final weekend of the year as well, March 25th, 26th, 27th, Newfoundland Growlers will be in. So, uh, we did also have a question about, uh, from Sam, I should say, um, uh, about a ballpark estimate on the promotional schedule. Uh, Sam, just stay tuned on that. Um, it's going to be a work in progress. Uh, I don't want to tell you something and then not have it come to fruition, but um, certainly we will have uh, a promotional schedule well before single game tickets go on sale in September uh, and, and likely at some point over the summer. So I know there's uh, fans that are, are um, very uh, interested in what we're going to come up with, and I'm sure we'll have some old favorites come back and, and also some new ones. So just stay tuned for that. And, and we're always open suggestions as well. So feel free to contact us through any of our social media or, with the contact page on MarinersMain.com because we obviously want to hear uh, hear from you. Is there going to be a Maine uh, Evolution Night? <laughs> we'll have to check in with uh, Terrence Wallen on that to see if we can get a, a Maine Evolution Night uh, going. So uh, that'll do it for the month of March. Uh, let's move ahead to the final month of the 21-22 season. And, uh, again, a lot of road games early and a lot of home games late. So this will be interesting to see where the Mariners are in the playoff conversation moving into uh, the final month of the season and how important these games are going to be. But uh, Riley, this is the lone trip of the season to Reading coming up uh, in the final month of the year. So um, you finished your career there, uh, in my opinion, and I think you agree the best visiting hotel. Uh, in the- <laughs> um, but what else about Reading, some spots you can recommend? Um, you know, you got to kind of pop over to the mall area um they got uh the olive garden over there um a couple other spots and they have some other uh like to be to be honest the best spot in in the city is right in the hotel the restaurant right there they cook some great meals up they got some great deals on meals too if you're uh staying at the hotel too so um you know it's it's not very often that you walk in there and you know a couple of the you know whether it's the royals players are sitting there having uh having dinner or you're, you find other players from the, the Mariners or other teams on the road uh, that are eating there too. So um, great, great hotel, nice little indoor pool, weight room that I never go into, <laughs> but, but it's, it's, it's always good to go back there. And I know Danny loves it when we, when we go to Reading. So it's the only trip this year uh, going into it. It's just a nice little uh, commute for him to come watch and, and check it out as well. So um, definitely one that, uh, 
he's going to be waiting a fairly long time for on his calendar. But, uh, you know, I think going going into this and, and you see the the away schedule we have there uh, with, with those games and, you know, another pretty long road trip as well. Um, you know, it's it's something that uh, we, we look at as we go to Adirondack. Uh, you know, do we come home to go to Worcester and then we head right to Reading or do we just stay on the road? Um, you know, so it's it's those types of things that, uh, you know, we have to figure out to make sure that we uh, we have the guys rested, um, especially going into that final little stretch there. If it's, you know, a playoff push to figure out what the best travel schedule will be for the guys. Um, and then I think it's always good to end off at home. Um, you know, if uh, if I remember correctly, we had a pretty good home record our very first year. We had a pretty good one last year, too. So. Um, that's with our fans being behind us uh, and, and supporting us. That allows uh, the guys to come out and play well at home too. Yeah, we actually finished the eighteen nineteen season at home against Newfoundland as well, just like this schedule. And that was, even though no playoffs, a memorable end of the season because Wade Murphy scored his second shootout winner in a matter of three weeks against the Growlers. And it, I think it was a good way to send the fans home on fan appreciation night. Um, wanted to, well, first of all, agree, I agree with you on the Reading thing. You really never have to leave the hotel because the restaurant is so good in there and a great breakfast also. And then you can just, uh, yeah, walk right across the street to the rink. So great setup there. I uh, want to throw up the trivia question one more time because we had a few guesses, but no correct answers so far. Which non-North Division opponent do the Mariners have the most wins against? So we're not obviously talking about Worcester, Reading, Adirondack, Newfoundland, formerly Brampton. Uh, and uh, Tua Riviera, obviously, the Mariners have not played them yet. Uh, and the answer is not Manchester either, which was a North Division. <laughs> uh, so we'll give a few more minutes here as we reach the end of this. But, Riley, you asked me, so I want to throw the question back at you. Tell me how the uh, – or what your routine is like on the road versus home uh, as a head coach. Um, yeah, I think I think being on on the road, it is a little more – uh, relaxed, uh, being at home. Um, and, and it all comes into what time you're skating at as well. Um, when you're the home team, um, you're skating earlier on and then the visiting team comes on after you for, for the morning skate. So, um, being, be not, uh, being at home here, I like to get in, uh, pretty early in the morning, just make sure, uh, lineups are good. Um, always want to have some answers for you when you come down to on who's going to be in or out. Um, and then it's just preparing the, the video being at home. I always get to head home for, uh, one or probably two or three hours in, in the afternoon. Um, usually leaving back down to the rink, uh, just as the kids get off the bus from school. So, uh, some, sometimes it works out with the buses a little bit early. You get to see them just before uh, coming down to the rink. But it's always good to go home and hang out with uh, my wife uh, just for a little bit in the afternoon as a lot of the games are on the weekends and it's, you know, back to back to back. So you don't really get to see them too much. Um, and then on the on the road, you you get a little bit of a sleep in because, you don't your morning skate is a little bit after uh, the, the, the home team. Um, we always have a, a team meal set up for the guys. So right after uh, skate, we head back to the hotel or wherever the meal is. Um, and then it's, uh, you know, we, we just kind of hang out, might have to touch up on a couple of video clips uh, in preparation for the game. Um, and then if, if you're lucky, you can lay down and have a nap. Uh, except for me, my brain's always going and there's so much movement in our league with, uh, you know, the phone can ring at any time with a player getting called up, um, players getting sent down, um, you know, so you always got to be on, on, on your toes and kind of ready for anything that's going to be thrown your way. Um, so there's not too many times I get to settle in for a nice af afternoon nap. And then it's, uh, I, I head down to the rink three hours before the game home end away um, and just prepare make make sure video is uh ready to go um it's it's always nice knowing when all the video and the preparation and everything is is set and you're ready compared to getting down there and you're kind of running around trying to make sure this is going and that's going just the way that you do it two keels of making sure the projector is working onto the wall you can shut the lights off in the room um you know finding a room that works for the team to fit into especially going to new buildings um like jacksonville and orlando um buildings that we haven't been a lot where we don't know um, just to get in there and make sure that we can get a good setup. I got to ask, have you ever as a player or a coach 
gone down for your afternoon nap and then overslept and been late for been late to the ring? Has that happened? <laughs> uh, no, no. I the only time I've been uh, been late um, was I was playing in Worcester. We had a morning skate and I uh, slept in, and I didn't have a car, uh, so I had to get a cab. And um, I guess that, that's what happens when you live on your own, right? I I thought I was going to be awesome. My uh, third year there, I got my own apartment. And uh, my car was being shipped from Saskatoon and I slept in and I had to call a cab to come pick me up. All the guys already went to the rink and everything like that. So I came running in there. Uh, I had about 10 minutes to get on the ice. So back then when I was younger, Keels, I didn't need a warm up or anything like that. I was going <laughs> to throw my equipment on and go. Um, so uh, but that's that is the only time I've really ever uh, o- overslept on on anything like that. Um, you know, I'm I'm pretty uh, pretty on it with my alarm. We got a few questions, uh, comments that we'll get to in just a moment. But first, I wanted to go to the last slide showing the complete home schedule. Uh, again, if you're tuning in late, same start times uh, as last season for home games: seven fifteen Friday, six o'clock Saturday, seven o'clock weekday, three o'clock Sunday. The exceptions: December 29th, three o'clock; uh, December 31st, New Year's Eve, five o'clock and also January 30th, 5 o'clock. Uh, also, you should be able to now access the full schedule at marinersdomain.com slash schedule that has home and away, as well as game times on there. So you can check that out. Um, and before we head off, I want to address a couple more questions and comments. Uh, Mark asking if any roster updates are coming soon. Riley, correct me if I'm wrong, July 9th is the date, the first date players can be signed? That is correct. Uh- <laughs> You know, there's there's not too much movement heading into that. Um, you know, some college free agents are out there right now, uh, but we can't sign them till July 9th. So it's more just a couple of conversations here or there, um, but uh, nothing uh, set in stone on uh, who's going to be coming back or not. So uh, working on it, Mark, I'm working on putting a, a strong team on, on the ice again. Um, and, and an exciting team uh, for you guys to come out and watch as well. And the good thing is the Mariners do retain the rights to those that had signed prior to opting out of the season. So that certainly helps since it is opposed to having to build completely from scratch. Um, so thanks for the question, Mark. And obviously we'll keep you posted on that as well. Uh, Phil asking if road game broadcasts will still be available to stream the next day. Yes, that is the plan. Our plan is to continue to use Mixler uh, for the radio broadcast, which is free and uh, always available on the archive. Um, at uh, in, in fact, every broadcast since the start of the Mariners is on there, as well as all the coaches' shows. Uh, Mixler.com slash Main Mariners slash Showreel. So certainly that is the plan. Uh, and then also Flow Sports will be the new uh, uh, video streaming provider. It is no longer going to be ECHL uh, TV through New Lion. Uh, it will now be through Flow Sports. So uh, not much will change on that. Uh, you can go to uh, Flow Sports. I believe it is flowhockey.tv uh, to get information uh, on subscriptions for that. Uh, you purchase a subscription, you get access to everything on uh, Flow Sports, which they have a bunch of other sports on there. There's some college hockey. Um, so it's, uh, I've been watching some of the ECHL games for the teams that are playing this year, uh, and uh, it's really, really good. So uh, Flow, Flow Sports will be the new provider for the video. We'll continue to do Mixler for the radio broadcast. So we always appreciate you tuning in. Uh, and we do have a correct answer to the trivia question and also goes to Mark Riley. Norfolk Admirals and Mariners have four wins against the Norfolk Admirals in their history, which is the most of, uh, against any non-North Division opponent. So congrats, Mark. You're the winner of that true hockey baseball cap. And we'll get that to you. Uh, uh, maybe Riley can play another round of golf with you. I believe uh, you can play around golf with Mark. I Mark did. We had a great afternoon out at uh, Spring Meadows there. It was uh, great. Uh, but let me get a couple more rounds in here before we get out, though. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, well, I think that'll just about do it here. We're going to save our uh, – we usually do some NHL talk. We're going to save that for uh, Jeff Merrick of Sportsnet, who is scheduled to be our next guest in two weeks. We'll move back to our uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time, time slot on Tuesday night, Tuesday, May 25th. Uh, from 7 to 8 right here on Facebook Live. You can check that out. You can check out uh, the archives as well over at MarinersDomain.com, all eight. And now this will be the ninth episode of X's and O's that are on there to check out. 
We'll go through uh, an entire NHL playoff preview with Jeff as we'll be probably just a couple games into the first round as those uh, the North Division still has to catch up a little bit. I believe they're playing up through May 19th. Uh, and then we'll be we'll dive into the Stanley Cup playoffs, so that'll be fun with Jeff. Again, check out the full schedule now available at mariners.com slash schedule. We'll be putting everything up on social media here as well. And, uh, man, we're just looking forward to it. it. I'm so happy that we've been able to talk about this, and, um, and now we move towards creating a promotional schedule. Um, ultimately, uh, as, as Mark's looking forward to signing some players, uh, getting a roster put together, and, again, single-game ticket information will be available towards the end of September. But make sure you're, you're taking advantage of uh, season ticket packages, half-season ticket packages, 12-game uh, mini plans, and 10-ticket flex packs. Uh, give Emily a call, 833-GO-MAIN. You visit MarinersOfMaine.com to put down a deposit as well on season tickets. Um, should be very fun to get back to the Cross Insurance Arena for season three. And also one more note, uh, the virtual tomato drop presented by Hannaford to go. The second one will take place tomorrow right here on Facebook Live. You can catch it at 2.30. Um, some great prizes. The grand prize is a two-night stay at the Holiday Inn by the Bay, plus half the cash. Um, and also prizes from Hannaford, from Jersey Mike's, from Aroma Joe's, and also the Mariners uh, will have a 10-game flex pa uh, pack given away. Um, net proceeds benefit Good Shepherd Food Bank, so a good cause there. If you go to mariners.com slash shop, you can purchase tomatoes, uh, six for $5. If you purchase 12 or more, you also get 15% off at the Mariners merchandise store. So one day left to, to uh, purchase those tomatoes. I believe there's about 200 left that have gone unclaimed. Um, we sold out of them last time. We have 500 or so sold so far for tomorrow's. So uh, check that out if you can um, and help out Good Shepherd Food Bank. Riley, thank you so much as always. Uh, we'll talk to you again in two weeks with Jeff on the on the playoff preview. And um, I'm sure we'll be talking again as we make this uh, schedule a reality in the coming weeks and months. Perfect, Keels. Thanks for having me on uh, again. And uh, thanks for all the viewers who uh, tuned in and uh, can't wait to see you guys on at the Cross Insurance Arena here in uh, the coming months. Thanks to everybody for dropping questions and participating as well. Check out the schedule at the link on your screen and we will talk to you again in two weeks.